Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Pakora here. Today I am going to read you a wonderful story called Horace the Horrible, A Knight Meets His Match. This is Horace, this is his niece Minuet. So let's see what happens in the story. Now here's Minuet and he's um, a friar, which is another word for a father or a pastor. And they're going up to this big castle on the hill. Hmm, let's see why. Princess Minuet stared up at the name on the front door of her uncle's castle. Is my uncle really horrible? She asked Friar Tim. His enemies certainly think so, said Friar Tim. He lifted the great door knocker and let it fall. This says, Sir Horace the Horrible. <clears throat> A moment later, the door flew open. I don't want any, boomed Horace the Horrible. Please, sire, said Friar Tim. I'm not selling anything. I am sent by your brother, the king. Hmm, <clears throat> said Horace. What does the royal big wig want now? He sent you this. Friar Tim stepped aside, and there stood Minuet. That, roared Horace, why, that's a child. Precisely, said the friar. This is your niece, Minuet. The king has the flu. He asked that you look after Minuet until he is well. That's impossible, blustered Horace. I've dragons to slay, armies to vanquish. Sorry, said Friar Tim. He gave Minuet a little push, said goodbye, and left. This, this can't be, shouted Horace. Minuet stared at the high stone walls and leering gargoyles. It was nothing like home. She sniffled. Horace glared at it. her. Minuet began to sob. Great galloping gargoyles, Horace bellowed. What's wrong? I miss my daddy, said Minuet. Oh, daddy fatty said Horace. I can do anything that swell head can do. Come, let's slay a dragon. He lifted Minuet high up on his horse and rode off. At last, they heard a roar. There's a dragon now, shouted Sir Horace. Down you go. He lowered Minuet from the saddle. She grabbed his sword. What are you doing? He cried, his eyes on the approaching dragon. Give that back. Hurry. Minuet picked up a stick and put it in Horace's hand. Holding the stick high, Sir Horace charged. Flames burst from the dragon's mouth, then smoke filled the air. There was a great deal of roaring and shrieking. Then a slightly scorched Sir Horace charged back out of the smoke. This is a stick, he shouted. I know, said Minuet. I could have been killed, Sir Horace roared. So could the dragon, said Minuet, and I still miss my daddy. Oh, daddy ratty, Sir Horace blustered. Your daddy couldn't fight a dragonfly. Come on, let's vanquish an army. He scooped up Minuet and galloped off again. Over a hill and dale, they rode until they came upon a vast army. Ah, here we go, said Sir Horace. He lowered Minuet to the ground and raced down into the valley. Minuet heard clashing swords and thundering hooves. She saw a great army flee into the hills. Sir Horace rode back with a flagstaff in his hand. For you, my lady, he said. Minuet unfurled the flag and looked at it. Uncle, she said, this is our flag. You just vanquished our army. Sir Horace lifted his visor and squinted. Oh, drat, he mumbled. I miss my daddy, Minuet sniffed. Daddy schmaddy, said Horace. Your daddy couldn't vanquish an army of ants. Let's go find some damsels in distress. And boys and girls, damsel is another word for a lady. And a damsel in distress means the lady's in trouble and she needs help. So that's what Sir Horace is looking for now. East and west and north and south they rode to the farthest corners of the kingdom, but there was no damsels to be found. Discouraged, Sir Horace sat down beneath a tree for some lunch and a short nap. While Horace snored, Minuet gazed at a tall stone tower in the distance. Away from her uncle she crept, across the meadow she ran, and up the tower stairs she climbed. Help, help, 
Minuet cried. Sir Horace sprang to his feet. A damsel, he cried. Fear not, my lady, help is on the way. He leapt to his horse, charged across the meadow, scaled the tower walls, and hurled himself through the window. You could have taken the stairs, said Minuet. Sir Horace stared. You, he cried. I thought I heard a damsel in distress. Uncle, said Minuet, I am a damsel in distress. Horace looked doubtful. How so, he asked. I miss my daddy, shouted Minuet. Oh, daddy waddy, shouted Horace. He grabbed Minuet's hand and dragged her back out to the meadow. Just tell me one thing your daddy does better than I do, he demanded. He hugs, said Minuet. He what? Sir Horace choked. He hugs, said Minuet. That's all I want. Not a dragon, not an army, not a damsel in distress. Just a hug. <laughs> said Sir Horace. We can't have that. I'm far too hard and prickly for hugging. You could take your armor off, said Minuet. Take mine? Are you mad? I haven't had my armor off in public since I was a knave. But my daddy, Minuet began. Horace rolled his eyes. Oh, all right. He barked. He took off his helmet, his breastplate, his mail suit, and his gloves. He squinted into the sun. I don't think I like this, he said. Sit down, said Minuet. Sir Horace sat. Minuet crawled into his lap. Now hug. Very carefully, Horace put his arms around her. Minuet snuggled against his chest. Thank you, Uncle Horace, she said. Sir Horace blushed. No one will ever call me Horace the Horrible again, he said. Is that so bad? asked Minuet. Sir Horace considered. Without his armor on, he could hear the birds singing and smell the meadow flowers. He could feel the sun on his shoulders and the cool breeze in his hair. He hugged Minuet tighter. Maybe not, he said. The end. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story as much as Mrs. Pecora did. Have a great day.